Today's a little different. I do have some sunglasses on. Just circumstances are preventing me from wearing eye makeup today. So it is what it is, but I have some Minnie Mouse eyeglasses, uh, you know, so keeping in theme. <laughs> Um, so yeah, just, just bear with me in today's video, but I think you're still going to enjoy the video regardless. And today's video, I am going to talk about things I think Universal Studios does better than Disney Parks. Ooh. <laughs> so um before we get into it please like comment and subscribe it helps me out a lot and it keeps you from missing any of my uploads all right let's get to it disney devotee so as you might have guessed by today's title and the subject matter, it's maybe a little spicier, a little controversial. Is Disney devotee no longer devoted to Disney? Well, no. <laughs> I am still very much a Disney devotee. However, that doesn't mean Disney is free of any criticism. In fact, I feel as a fan of Disney, um, it's kind of not really my duty. That sounds a little stuck up, but you know, when, when you're a fan of something, that doesn't mean it's always free of criticism and everything they do is 100% great and perfect. And I feel like as a company, um, Disney especially, actually does better when they have competition and they have critiques and people, I don't know, kind of pushing the bar and making them want to be better. And I might even do a whole other video about that because, you know, history has shown that in the past, like the competition with DreamWorks or uh, Don Bluth in the, the 80s it really made them have to up their game so they could continue to be at the top of their game, to continue to grow as a company and thrive. So when I'm listing off these things that I feel Universal does better than Disney, um, I'm not saying that Disney's necessarily bad at it, but I think the company should kind of look at some of these things I feel Universal Studios does better than them and maybe consider implementing them into the Disney parks so that maybe the fans would be a little bit happier. Anyway, in today's video, I will be listing things that I feel Universal Studios does better than Disney parks. And as I am a Floridian and I go to the parks in Orlando. These will be based off of my experiences at Walt Disney World and Universal Orlando, but I feel like could probably also go for Disneyland and Universal Studios Hollywood, but I'm not 100% sure. So um, if there's anything on this list that you feel does not cover the Hollywood parks, or I mean, Anaheim or Hollywood, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear kind of how it's different in those parks as opposed to the ones here in Florida. I won't be listing these in any specific order, so it's not like one, two, three. It's just different subjects that I feel need to be covered. So with that being said, Let's get into it. Now, I've made it no secret that I strongly dislike the whole Genie Plus Lightning Lane debacle at Disney World. Um, but unfortunately, as long as people are willing to pay for it, it's not going away anytime soon. I really wish Disney would bring back Fast Pass. I feel like it was simpler, um, it was less expensive, and just less of a hassle for Disney guests. But like I said, 
That's kind of a pipe dream. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> the Lightning Lane makes it feel like Disney is nickel and diming their guests, which is fair because they are. Um, and it's just a very complicated system. If you've never used it, essentially you have to go into your Disney Experience app the morning of. It's not like you can purchase this in advance. Um, I think the earliest you can book it is like 7 a.m. And basically, it can easily cost a family upwards of $100 a day extra just to have Lightning Lane to maybe two, possibly three rides or attractions. And if you don't purchase it early enough the day of, you're not guaranteed a Lightning Lane for the specific rides or attractions you want to go to. You are at the mercy of what is available, uh, the times it's available, and if you have separate parties that purchase their tickets or have individual passes, you all have to do it on your phone, try to do it at the same time, sync up the time you're going to go in the lightning lane, it's a whole thing. It's very frustrating to me, and I know I am not the only one who hates it. I think it's generally disliked. Enter Universal's Express Pass, which is way less complicated, way less confusing. Um, it's more straightforward, and in my opinion, you get more bang for your buck. Starting at $89.99, the Universal Express Pass gives you access to the fast lane at rides one time per day. And there's no limit, it's just whatever rides or attractions are listed when you buy it, which it's a really good chunk. It's pretty much most of the rides. So I feel like it's a much better deal. And if you pay just $10 more, you have unlimited access. So that means if you want to do like a Harry Potter ride more than once that day, you get to use the express lane. I think it's more than worth it. Especially again, if you're looking at the lightning lane at Disney World, you're paying like $100 extra and you're not really guaranteed you're going to have the lightning lane for the ride you want and you have to schedule a specific time. Yeah, it's much better. Universal does the express lane or the fast pass lane way better than Walt Disney World. And I don't like saying that, but honestly, it's a fact. And another plus side of the Universal Express Pass is you can buy it when you purchase your tickets. So you know before you are even going into the park that you are going to be able to use that fast lane. There's no waiting until the morning of to try to hurry and book what you want. It's a done deal. You can just kick back, relax, and enjoy your time at the park. So yeah, Universal's Fast Pass system is way less frustrating and, in my opinion, much better than Disney Parks. Also, if you book a Universal Premier Hotel Room, you get a free Express Pass included in that package. That is an amazing incentive, and I wish the Disney parks did this. If you book a premiere room at Walt Disney World, you're not getting anything extra like that. Um, which, why not? Uh, you're paying a lot of money. So um, I hope that maybe someday Disney will reconsider the way they set up Lightning Lane and um, take a look at what Universal Studios is doing, because they're doing it better. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but for me, the very first thing I think of when I think of Universal Studios is Halloween, my favorite holiday. And honestly, no theme park does Halloween better than Universal Studios. And of course, I think with this one, it depends on what kind of experience you're looking for. Are you looking for family-friendly, not scary Halloween? Then you probably should go to Disney because Universal is unapologetically spooky and scary. <laughs> Putting those things aside for a minute though, 
just looking at the numbers, I feel like Universal is a little bit above Disney for Halloween. Starting at only $80 per night, Halloween Horror Nights includes a multitude of haunted houses and scare zones for you to enjoy. Now on the flip side, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party tickets typically cost an average of $140 a night, typically even more. Last year, my wife and I were able to snag tickets for $99 a piece at Mickey's Halloween party, but that is only because we utilized an annual pass holder discount and it was an early booking available only to annual pass holders. We booked an early, early party like beginning of September, so it was also cheaper for this reason. And again, just looking at the numbers, the Universal Halloween Horror Nights is kind of goes longer or later into the night than Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, which to be fair, you know, they're going for different clientele, so it depends on what you're looking for. But Universal Halloween Horror Nights just seems to offer more for your money. Um, honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to go to the Halloween party at Disney World again. It was kind of a letdown to me. I feel like I didn't get enough for my money. Um, it did rain, so they had to cancel a lot of the stuff, like the shows and the parades. So then there just wasn't really a lot for me to do, and I didn't really want to just walk around and trick or treat, you know? So... Again, it depends on what you're going for, but uh, Universal goes all out. <laughs> and while I do love Disney villains, you just can't top the classic Universal monsters like the Bride of Frankenstein or Dracula. That is quintessential Halloween. Overall, I feel like Universal does more. They put more effort into their Halloween events and you pay less money for a better experience. Which is why I have to say Universal Studios does Halloween better than the Disney parks. And again, as a reminder, I am basing this off of the parks in Orlando, but I tried to pick ones that I felt like could also fit for our West Coast parks. But if there's anything that you feel doesn't fit, again, I would love to hear your opinion in the comments down below. Another thing I feel Universal Studios does better than the Disney parks is accessibility. Let me explain. If you're watching this video, you've maybe been to one or both of these parks, but if you haven't, let me do a quick breakdown so you know what I'm talking about. And in this case, this definitely, I feel, fits more for the parks here in Florida, so bear with me. But I want to talk about the layout of the parks and the size of the parks. So, let's look at some maps and compare the numbers. Uh, just looking at acreage, Universal Studios Orlando is much smaller than Walt Disney World which in some ways is bad, but in other ways, especially accessibility, it's good in my opinion. Here's a handy breakdown on the size of the two parks from orlandovacation.com. Overall, Universal Studios sits on 840 acres. Walt Disney World, on the other hand, has 25,000 acres and is nearly the size of two Manhattans. Clearly, Disney World is more spread out, so if you want to park hop or go out for dinner to Disney Springs after a day in the park, it will take longer to get there, so you have to allow yourself that extra time to take a bus, take a boat, drive. It's not like you can just walk from Magic Kingdom to Disney Springs. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> 
Universal, on the other hand, because it is so compact, it is much easier to park hop or go to a restaurant at the end of the day. As you can see by this map, it's pretty much all right there. And you park in the parking garage, you go through security, and then you're in Universal City Walk, which is comparable to Disney Springs. It might be a little bit smaller, but it's still really cool. It has restaurants, shopping, and entertainment. From there, you can go to either the right or left, and you're in Universal Studios or Islands of Adventure. They're two theme parks. So while it is much smaller than Walt Disney World, it makes for perhaps an easier visit. One can start their morning in Islands of Adventure, pop over to Universal Studios in the afternoon, and then wrap up the day having dinner and shopping at City Walk. Now, while I can't guarantee you'd be able to do all of that in one day, it, you get the picture. It's, it's a better possibility and it's more accessible. So, I'm going to have to say Universal Studios is more accessible than Walt Disney World. It's more compact. Furthermore, Universal Studios in Orlando will actually be a stop on Brightline, Florida's new high-speed train, which connects Miami to Orlando to Tampa. That is huge. They are going to be way more accessible for guests. And it's my understanding, at least at one point, I'm not sure if it still will be, but I believe the Brightline train will have a stop at the Orlando airport. So ideally, you could take the train from the airport to Universal property if you're staying there, which is amazing. And originally, Walt Disney World was also going to be a stop on the Brightline train. They were going to have a station near or at Disney Springs. And unfortunately, that fell through. And I believe it was on Disney's end that they decided to no longer do it. And that's super disappointing. <laughs> so yes, Universal wins. My final item on the list, I'm going to admit, I may still be kind of on the fence about because it depends on which areas of the two parks we're talking about. And I love both parks. I really do. However, in this specific case, I think Universal does immersion better. So let me elaborate. Now, don't come for me, but... I feel like Universal's Wizarding World of Harry Potter is executed better than Disney's Star Wars Land Batu. And I, I even feel guilty just saying this because I love Galaxy's Edge and I'm actually a bigger fan of Star Wars than Harry Potter. But the Harry Potter stuff at Universal is incredible. From theming, to rides, to butterbeer, it's just a better experience. For example, while seeing the Millennium Falcon is amazing, the Smuggler's Run, the Millennium Falcon ride, is honestly underwhelming. It's just a glorified video game. Like, meh, okay. Hogwarts Express, on the other hand, is spot on. You really feel like you're on the train going to Hogwarts, and I feel like no expense was spared in creating this experience where you're at the train platform, and then you're on the train, and if you've never ridden it before, I highly recommend it. It's so cool. And... I have to be honest, the blue milk at Galaxy's Edge is disgusting. <laughs> um, I have yet to hear anyone say that they like it and it's good. If you like it, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you liked about it because I think it's nasty. <laughs> On the other hand, butterbeer. Oh, it is so refreshing and delicious that kind of butterscotch flavor. 
um, and the texture is better. So, you know, I mean, just trying to give some examples, you know, as to why I feel the way I feel. <laughs> I love butterbeer. Maybe that's why I like it more. I could be biased, uh, but who knows? <laughs> Looking at it from just the number standpoint, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter has five, count them, five rides, while Galaxy's Edge has only two. And in my opinion, only one of those rides, Rise of the Resistance, is even worth your time. And if you want to go on Rise of the Resistance, you're going to have to have a lot of time because the waits can be over two hours long. So you have to weigh how much you really want to ride it. And you can use an express pass for at least some of the Harry Potter rides at Universal, which again, it just makes it more accessible to guests. And having more Harry Potter rides means shorter lines because there are more people spread out, so to speak, in that area, if that makes sense. So that concludes my opinion of Things I feel like Universal does better than Disney. I know it was kind of a shorter video this week, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think there was something I missed? Do you completely disagree with what I said? Let me know. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Um, I'm continuing to make as much Disney-related content as I can, and it's just so exciting to see my channel grow. I just passed 500 subscribers, and I, my mind is just blown by that. Thank you so much. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see ya real soon. <laughs>